Hello, Richard. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, been enjoying Red Eye recently. Now, we're here to talk about your new film, The Boy in the Woods. Now, it's uh, very much kind of uh, does what it says on the tin. But for people who don't know the biggest story, what's it about? So it's based on um, the autobiography of Maxwell Smart, who was a young boy, a young Jewish boy, that had to, to flee uh, the concentration camps um, into into the into a farm in uh, the border of Ukraine and Poland, and he's taken in by a farmer, which is the character I play, uh, Yasko. Um, but ultimately, he has to be turned out into the woods, and he survives living in a hole in the ground uh, for nearly a year, um, coming very very close to to getting caught. But he ultimately survives, and. Uh, Max has gone on to become a very celebrated artist, uh, and and some of the seeds of that are played out in the film. So, uh, as you say, Maxwell, is, uh, I understand he's living in Canada, and he's still still alive at the moment. I understand he is. He's nice. Did you get to meet him? He paints every day. Um, he's uh, yeah. I mean, he, his life after this ordeal was extraordinarily rich and full, and it's almost like he took life by the by the horns and sort of rode it. And uh, we didn't meet in person. We haven't met yet. I think there's gonna be some screenings in New York where we'll finally meet face to face. But I but I spoke to him like this on Zoom on the set and uh, he's a very, very enigmatic, powerful personality. Now, uh, the director, uh, Rebecca Snow, uh, my understanding is she made a documentary about the story some years ago, back in around about 2019, I think. So. Do you, what was her reason, if, if you're aware, or if she spoke to you about it, about turning this into a, a feature film, a narrative feature film? Yeah, the um, the documentary is called Cheating Hitler, and I think um, she part of the the reason for making that documentary was to discover the missing people from Max's life. So it was almost like a a journey of um, finding uh those characters that turn up in his story um some of them are still alive um my character yasko was somebody that max never managed to find but i think the reason that um rebecca wanted to move forward into a dramatic feature was because telling that story was um sort of through reported speech from from the man himself in his 90s and i think recreating the actual drama of what happened to him was was something that really appealed to her. And, and as a documentary filmmaker, her, her shooting style was um, incredibly truthful. Now, the one thing I did want to ask you about, and it's kind of, I know this can be um, problematic for some actors, um, you have an accent in the role, and it's not the most, uh, it just strikes me, it's not the most easy of accents to master. Uh, how did you, um, how did you deal with that? How did you get across that? So I had a really great dialect coach. Um, I think there were a few coaches on the show because, uh, on the film, because Jet was uh, um, speaking Yiddish. Uh, there's Ukrainian, there's Polish. Um, mine was kind of a hybrid because Yasko's farm was kind of on the border and also dialect is not quite what we know it to be now back then I think there were all, you know regional dialects in that area which were were complicated it, it's an odd thing because it, effectively they wouldn't be speaking English with dialects they'd be speaking Polish but um, our DOP Adam was actually Polish and on at the end of the first day of shooting he kind of came over and said yeah you sound you sound real. It sounds good, and and it would that vote of confidence made me made me happy. But um, but it, you sort of teeter between clarity and authenticity with with dialect. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, even though this is uh, set sort of in Europe, uh, my understanding is that this was shot in Canada, um, and you've uh, Canada is a massive country, beautiful country. But I'm just wondering, from a, a crew and cast point of view. With the location of the woods and and the hole in the ground that he effectively lives on, how far did you have to tramp into the woods every day to to get to your locations? 
A really good point, actually, because that was one of the that my eyebrows were raised when I heard we were going to be shooting in Northern Ontario for Poland. I just thought, well, you know, how does that, how's that going to work? But but actually, the the type of tree and the you know the ancient forests of of Northern Ontario were were actually kind of perfectly suitable. Um, Yasko's farm was the, one of the most authentic sets I've ever walked onto. It just didn't feel like a set. In fact, I don't think they built it. I think they found somewhere and adapted it. The proximity of the neighbor across the field and the journey into the woods to the I mean, they found everything. Um, and the, also the, the season, you know, we were there in November, but we would have sunny days and frosty days. So, you know, there was, there was sort of weather patterns that went in our favor, but I loved it. I loved being out in the wild and feeling feeling like that farmer you know yeah yeah so uh you've appeared in several huge blockbusters you know the, the hobbit trilogy you've been a, a marvel film first avenger um there's other films like alice through the looking glass uh, all star cast like ocean eight um do you ever have a moment when you're on these kind of size of films where you have a if you like an almost out of body experience when you almost uh, a sense of being overwhelmed by the, the very size of the production. Uh, yeah, every time, every time. Um, definitely on The Hobbit, I was, um, I got down to New Zealand and thought, what on earth am I doing here? I'm going to be sent home. The weirdest one, though, for me was Ocean's 8 because that cast of, you know, Anne Hathaway, um, Kate Blanchett, Sandra Bullock, Rihanna, all of the, I mean, mega stars. And I was cast really late. I I was sort of two days from filming and I got a phone call because someone had dropped out and I had to get on an aeroplane and walked onto the set, shook hands with Sandra Bullock and started acting with her. And that was literally an out-of-body experience. I just was like, I didn't know who I was, where I was. I was jet lagged. I'd been thrown into this sort of dinner suit and I yeah it was quite extraordinary but they were she was amazing she was she saw what had happened and she really took care of me oh that's good so then finally we always like to ask actors and directors this going back a long way in your own personal life can you remember the very first film that you saw on the big screen yeah it was the spy who loved me that's showing my age and you know why I remember it is because it was my birthday and I was so desperate I wanted to see Bambi but it was sold out so we had to go and see the spy who loved me and I think it had a, a 13 rating or something um because I remember my mum sort of sneaking me in under under her coat because but I was crying my eyes out because I wanted to see Bambi but then became completely obsessed with wanting an underwater car Oh, right. The, the uh, esteemed Lotus. Yeah. That's a, a fantastic. Well, that was, I think, uh, Spy Who Loved Me was back in 77. And I think the Bond films then were, uh, if you remember, the old certification was uh, the old A certificate. Right. Which was what? Which was, um, <laughs> you had to be with an adult, I think. Oh, OK. Well, maybe we were OK. Yeah. So 77, I would have been, that would have been my sixth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's young to see a Bond film. I mean, no, but I, I mean, I came home and started sort of running my my uh, my matchbox cars in the bar. <laughs> I was gonna say, as long as you didn't do the uh, the opening sequence where he skis off the end of a cliff and his amazing. United Kingdom uh, parachute opens up. Amazing, amazing films. The sort of thing I did when I was a kid. But anyway, right? Okay. Well, thank you ever so much for your time, Richard. Uh, it's 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 a there's some really emotional scenes in there, particularly towards the end, where um, without giving anything away, but with his friend, what happens to his friend, especially. But uh, yeah, it's great. So thank you very much for your time, Richard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Simon.